Hello everyone, welcome to Switch Up, as once again we look at some of the games coming out in this upcoming week for the Nintendo Switch. A big thank you to Gamefly for sponsoring this video. I'm going to pick some of the most interesting games to talk about. Interesting doesn't necessarily always mean good, but hopefully we will discover a few decent ones as we go along. What's coming out this week then? Well, let's find out. First up then coming out on the 15th we have a game called Regina and Mac, Regina and Mac, that looks like it should be a long vowel sound on that eye to me. This is selling for £8.99 and is a platform, 3D platformer, heavily inspired by the games of the mid to late 90s. You play as a macaw named one of those two names I said earlier and a Tyrannosaurus named Mac and it seems to follow the 3D platforming formula from back in that time very closely of having two completely different animals working together one of whom sits on the other one's shoulder. Now when I look at this game I see what a lot of people see about pixel art these days. For me good pixel art is when a development team use what inspired them from a period of gaming back in the day but create something that couldn't have been made back then. Pay homage but don't completely replicate. This game seems to do the latter unfortunately in that the graphics look like something that would have come out back in about 1998. Now some people might like that and that's fair enough but for me why wouldn't you take what drew you into 3D platformers at that time, games like Mario 64 for example, and create something that builds upon those foundations rather than just replicating it nearly 25 years later. The next game then is a game called Sessanoid. I'm sure they would be soft seas, not hard seas. Man, I'm really struggling with pronunciations today. Anyway, this is a retro inspired twin stick shooter which sells for £9.99, although it does have 50% off that price until the day before release. The blurb says it's an 8-bit inspired flick screen twin stick shooter set in an alternate dimension where the pixels are still chunky and the bad guys are black and white, except for their dangly red bits. Well, that's concerning. It also includes a full arcade game called, oh my word, Yugatron, Yugatron, would that be a soft or a hard G, what's going on today? Anyway, whatever it's called, it's 50 levels of Robotron style action. Now being a retro gamer, loving twin stick shooters and loving Robotron, this sounds absolutely just the ticket, although I can imagine there's just as many people screaming into their pillows at the minute at the thought of another retro inspired game. A big thanks to Gamefly who've sponsored this video. For those unaware what it is, well, imagine those old video game stores you used to go to to rent games, well it's like that but online. You pick out the titles you want, they mail them to you, and once you've finished with them send them back and they'll then send you the next one on your list. It's all really simple, quick and to be honest, with some of the prices games are these days, they have over 8,000 different titles for PlayStation, Xbox and of course the Nintendo Switch. But for those people that enjoy retro, they've also got all the way back to PS2 games, as well as Blu-ray movies and DVDs for those film buffs. Something worth noting as well is they'll be supporting the next-gen consoles when they release, which is quite a relief as the games are rumoured to be up to $70, which is crazy. If you sign up using the link in the description, then you can get three months of two-disc Gamefly for only $9.95 a month, which you won't even come close to anywhere else. Once again, a big thanks to Gamefly for sponsoring this video, do check out that link down in the description. And next is a game called Norman's Great Illusion. I can pronounce this one. This releases on the 19th and sells for £4.49, although again it does have 20% off until the day of release. This looks to be a game with some social or political commentary in which you play an engineer in a plant in the face of rising social tensions. You'll have decisions to make as you go along and each of these decisions will have an impact, no doubt, on the people around you. There are moral choices to make, seven different endings to find and two mini games. one of which I've just seen on the trailer looks a bit like that old Ghostbusters game that was on the NES. It's hard to determine much at all from the trailer in terms of the actual gameplay itself or indeed how much content it includes for that cheap price. If you are interested though, like I said, this one's out on the 19th. And next up we have a really interesting game called The Eternal Castle which is coming out on the 20th. This is an adventure game that uses retro 2-bit or CGA style graphics, but promises modernised game mechanics at the same time, plus sophisticated sound design. Rotoscoping is used for the character animations in a similar style to things such as Flashback or Another World. 
Now this one has quite an interesting history behind it in that the advertising campaign says that this is a remake of a lost classic from the MS-DOS era, more specifically from 1987. Now I've heard many people say that this isn't the case and it's a clever marketing ploy similar to what was done with the Blair Witch Project maybe for example when that film came out all those years ago and I've heard other people say that it can't be confirmed either way. I don't know what the honest answer is, I don't know if it's ever been confirmed. I'm leaning towards it being a marketing ploy myself but I don't know, maybe you can let me know in the comments your thoughts or if you know more than I do. Also on the 20th, we have a game called Gleamlight. This is a 2D action game that uses a quite beautiful hand-drawn aesthetic. It almost looks like stained glass windows and reminds me in some respects of both Child of Light and a little bit of Hollow Knight in terms of the animation style, not necessarily the gameplay. Having just said that, I've just read what it says on the blurb and it does say a beautiful world made of glass, so there you go. There's also no user interface to fully immerse you in what's happening and by the looks of it, the story is told via what you see as opposed to through words or cutscenes. And then we have Ellipsis, which is coming out again on the 20th. And this is an avoid em up, which uses neon graphics. You have to traverse a number of single screen stages, by the looks of the trailer at least anyway, grabbing a particular collectible to allow you to move on to the next level, all the while avoiding a whole host of enemies and hazards. There's something about that neon style that just holds up through the ages. It's almost timeless. And for £4.49, you get over 120 levels spread over eight worlds. And next we have Peaky Blinders Mastermind, based of course on the Peaky Blinders TV show, starring Cillian Murphy among others. This, like the show, is set in Birmingham just after the Great War, although this is actually set before the events of the first series. It will see you joining the Shelby family's criminal gang as you follow the rise of Tommy as he successfully uncovers a sinister plot to put the family out of business. This is actually a puzzle adventure game. When I first saw there was a Peaky Blinders game coming, I was half expecting a run and gun, something along the lines maybe of Guns Gore and Cannoli, but this looks to have elements of point and click and possibly some tactical play to it as well. At £19.99, if you're a fan of the show, it may be worth a pickup, and even if you've never seen it before, owing to the fact that it's set before the first series, you may still be able to play it and get a grasp of what's going on. And then we have a game called Kawaiden. That's not me struggling with pronunciation again, is it? Azuma Mana Story. This is set in 1930s Japan and sees you exploring the depths of the Azuma Manor whilst avoiding traps and solving puzzles as you try to save the Azuma family. This is a 3D horror action game inspired by the games of the early 2000s with some point and click elements in there as well. Now I'll be honest, when I first watched the trailer, it looks very much like Deadly Premonition, just in terms of the character animation. I could almost imagine Agent Francis York Morgan walking down that path shooting the shadows. As I mentioned, it has that early 2000s feel to it. That's the second game in this video that's been inspired by the early 3D platformers. And it seemingly takes it a step further than that by saying that you can choose between tank controls essentially, or more modern controls. They've also said that it has a subtle cell shaded look to it as well. This certainly looks interesting, and I like this graphical style much more than the one that I mentioned right at the start of the video. And it sells for £19.99, although it does have 10% off until release date. Next coming on the 21st, we have Samurai Jack Battle Through Time, based on the cartoon by, was it Cartoon Network? I think so. This sees you taking on the role of Jack as you bid to try and stop the evil Akus, Akus, oh my word, this week, evil reign in this new adventure, told by the original creators of the TV show. It has some of the original voice acting cast as well, and the story also ties into the series finale, so says the blurb. Now, I've never seen the show, hence the reason I didn't know how to pronounce the villain's name, but having just watched the trailer, I have to say I'm actually quite impressed with how it looks. It has a nice mix of the traditional cartoon style, as well as a 3D platforming look as well. From the little I saw, it reminds me in some respects of the legend of K, a game, funnily enough, that 
has been ported to the Switch. Quite expensive at £35.99, but fans of the show may want to give it half a look. And finally for the week then, although this one's only available in the US for now, this is Phonotopia Awakening. This is a game that actually started as a Flash game, I believe, and has been fleshed out into something much bigger, and is now about to release on the Nintendo Switch. It's Zelda inspired. Mark actually did a preview of this game, and I'll put a link to that video in the top pinned comment if you want to have a look. And he actually said that it reminded him quite a lot of Zelda 2, The Adventures of Link. Filled with towns to visit and dungeons to explore, it has over 10 different weapons and tools, and 50 different enemy types, as well as 12 different boss encounters. There are secrets to find and achievements to earn, and the main campaign is estimated to last about 25 hours, or 50 hours if you are a completionist. As I said, Mark has already previewed this one, so you're best off probably watching that video and hear the thoughts of someone that's played it already, but it's coming out in the US on the 20th for $19.99 and is set to follow elsewhere a little bit later. So there you have it for this week. All in all, whilst no big names come in, there are definitely some interesting games to look out for. Anyway, another big thank you to Gamefly for sponsoring this video. Very much appreciated. Please do check out the link for their product down below. A quick thank you to our Patreons as always for your continued support and to each and every one of you for watching our videos. Take care, stay safe of course, and until next time, happy gaming.